If you're like me, you use Companion to automate all sorts of things at your church for your production setup. But did you know that you can also trigger those actions from ProPresenter? This means that not only can you actually control things from your Stream Deck or the web portal, but you can trigger actions based on specific slides and macros that you have inside of ProPresenter. It's pretty easy to set up, and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So first things first, make sure you actually have ProPresenter. Um, I know this works in ProPresenter 7. I don't know the other versions, but come on, if you're still using ProPresenter 6 for all of your stuff, um, can't really help you there. Anyway, I've got a few different slides here, and just for the sake of things, I have basic text on them, and we'll see what these do in a second. I'm also running Companion on the same computer. Now, they don't have to be on the same computer as long as they're on the same network, but for this demo, they are. We'll talk about that. So now, if you actually go into the Companion portal here, we're going to go down to Settings and Protocols. And the one we're interested in here is called Rostock. It's pretty straightforward. All we need to do is turn on this Rostock listener and take note of this port. Now, if you go over here on the side too, you can click on Rostock and you can see some information here about what it does and how to actually send commands using it. So remote triggering can be done by sending Rostock commands to port 7788. And it shows how to actually format those commands. So there's two different formats and we'll kind of show that in a second. So that's the first step is actually enabling the Rostock listener in Companion. So now Companion is listening for Rostock commands. So the other half of this is that ProPresenter is going to actually send those Rostock messages over to Companion and we can then use those to trigger certain things. So we need to turn that on in ProPresenter. So we can jump over here to settings, devices, and then we will add a device, Rostock, click on that. Um, we can name this whatever we want. Since we're communicating with Companion, we could call it Companion Rostock if we really wanted to just keep things really super obvious. We'll say auto reconnect for sure. Hardware, select device. So we want this to work over the network. So that's TCP. Under behavior, we're actually going to change this to controller. The action will be connect to, and that's the only option here, via. If you wanna go via a specific network adapter, you can specify here, but I'm just gonna leave it as any. Now, the address and the port. So these are the parts that matter, especially whether it's running on the same computer or on a different computer. So this is going to be the IP address of Companion as well as the port that Companion told us about. So we can do the port first because it actually tells us, and it tells us right here as well, the listen port is 7788. So let's go ahead and set those, 7788. And then the IP address, hopefully if you're using Companion, you know how to find the IP address of your Companion instance. Generally, it's going to be the address that you're actually going to up here to get to the configuration panel. Now, because this is running on my same computer, we're just getting to it from 127.0.0.1, which basically means it's running on the same computer. That's the local host address. So we'll put that in, 127.0.0.1. Great, so that is set up. We can hit the back button here and we can say connect. Great, we've got a little green bar here, which means that we have successfully connected to companion via Ross Talk. So now these are able to actually communicate with each other, but it's only one way. It only goes from ProPresenter to Companion. There are ways for Companion to control ProPresenter as well, um, whether you're doing that from Companion or with the specific Stream Deck integrations. That's a different video though. This is really just going in the one direction. If we go back to the documentation here, we can see the commands are that we can press and release a button essentially. It's very basic. It can't actually send like specific actions you wanna do, but rather you can just specify a button that you wanna press. But that's okay because we can build our buttons in a way that make that easy and make that do a lot of things. So if we go over here to buttons, we'll go to page two. I've got a handful of things set here. So we've got this button right here, test and we'll just set this background color to black-ish. And then we have these two buttons, set green and set red. And those are, when we run those, they're actually set to just change the background color of this test button. So if we hit the set green one, great, that changes to green. If we hit set red, it changes it to red. It's not that exciting, this is not actually useful, but it's more just something that we can see happening so we know if we were successful. So we want ProPresenter to actually press these buttons. So if we take a look at this, we can see that the address of this button is page two, row one, column four. And if we go back to the protocols page and take a look at Rostock, we can see the way to send that command is cc custom control two slash three slash one. That's the page row column. So again, we said this was two one four is the one we actually want to do. 
So we'll go in here and that's the turn button green. We will right click on this slide, add action, communication, companion Ross talk, and custom control. Then in here, we will say two, one, four. So now you can see this little icon in here, which means it's got an action and it's a communication action. And it's going to be sending that custom control command to companion. Now you'll notice if you compare it to this, I didn't include this CC. You don't actually need to do that um, when you're sending this and you select custom control as your option inside of ProPresenter. There might be other tools where you do need to include that, but for ProPresenter, you don't need to. So let's go ahead and see if this works. I have my emulator here and we can see that our button is red right now. And if we click turn button green slide here, let's go ahead and clear the slides and we'll click this fresh. Whoa, look at that, the button turned green. That is exactly what we wanted to have happen. But our turn button red still doesn't do anything and do nothing does nothing, which is great. But let's go ahead and wire this one up and we're going to use the other format of this uh, command. So you can see here, it also is button five on page two. I'm not really sure why you would use this format. Maybe people who know more about companion would know why you would use this over this. I think this one's a lot more clear to actually understand, but just for the sake of things, we're gonna show that it works this way too. So it's going to be button on the page. So we can count out buttons. There's eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So this is going to be page two, button 14. And in this case, it's a colon, but we're still gonna go the same thing, add action, communication, companion Ross talk, custom control. And I think I said that was 14. Great, so let's try it. Turn button red. Boom, there it is. And now I can jump between those. And you can even see over here on the emulator that it is activating those buttons. It is pressing them as I do this. So there you have it. This is how you connect ProPresenter to be able to talk to Companion in order to trigger button presses. So how is this useful? Obviously changing the colors of our buttons based on these buttons is not super exciting, but there's a lot of different use cases for this. One really obvious one is, hey, when we hit our pre-service slides and maybe we play music in the room during that, you can trigger a companion button that has a bunch of different actions on it that maybe set the lights in the room to a specific way. Maybe they turn up Spotify and make sure that everything else is muted in the way that it's supposed to be during that pre-service scroll. Maybe it starts something on your live stream that runs at the same time as that. I mean, companion can do however many things we wanna do with it. And as long as we have set those buttons up, we can trigger them from ProPresenter at whatever time we want. Maybe when we go into a new certain song, we actually wanna set the lighting in the room a certain way. Now you can accomplish this potentially using MIDI commands from ProPresenter, but if you've already built out your entire system to use Companion and stacking actions in there, well now you don't have to do something different for your lighting cues. Instead, you can just say, trigger it all from ProPresenter, say, trigger this song, and all of a sudden everything starts and you're off to the races. The other thing you can do is you can actually stack these actions. So we'll need to make a new button here that does something interesting. So we'll create a button and this one instead we will say set text and uh, we will change this to 201 and we'll say the button text should be new text, right? Nothing super interesting. Um, and we'll say set text, great. So now on this turn button green, we're going to add a new action communication, companion Rostock, custom control, and this is going to be 216. So now when we hit this button, it's not going to just set it to green, it's also going to set the text on this button to be new text. So as I click it, there we go, we can see that new text. Now this can get really cumbersome if we want to actually stack actions on here. Now I will say it's really nice, you can see that this is triggering two different actions, but adding them all here could be cumbersome. So one way to avoid this is inside of Companion, actually just stacking multiple actions on a single button. If they're things that you do together all the time, that might make sense for you. The other way is to create a macro inside of ProPresenter. And you may use these already, you may not. But if we go in here and we create a macro and we'll just say, um, we'll say red macro this time. And we will do another button that is going to set text and we'll change this to 201 and we'll say red text. And we'll say set red text, great. So now on this macro, we can actually add actions inside of this macro. So this is going to be a little bit tedious. Let's say 215 
And then we can add another action. Again, communication, companion Ross talk, custom control, and 217. Great, so now we have this macro. So on this slide to turn button red, instead of stacking two different actions on here, we can remove those. And instead we can add a macro and we can call it the red macro. And so then we can go in here and what does the red macro do? Well, it has these actions that do things. So now if we have this macro here and it's on this button, it's on this slide, we can hit this slide and it performs both of those actions here. So again, you can see there's a lot of different ways to actually do a lot of things all at once and it just depends on what way makes the most sense for you. If you have actions that are always performed together, maybe it makes sense to have them in companion. If you have disparate actions that are sometimes performed at different times, but as far as pro presenter is concerned in your slides, they're all performed at the same time, let's make a macro and then you can reuse it. For instance, maybe every time you play a video in here, you turn your lights down and you turn the audio input to a specific level. Well, maybe you can make a macro that does all of that inside of there. Or if you really just need to perform one-off actions, great, you can put the actions directly on the slides. Really the world is your oyster as far as how you actually break this stuff up and where you put those actions. Just try to make sure that you keep things organized the best you can. One other thing to note about this is if you noticed, these commands rely specifically on a page, row, and column for these companion buttons. This means that if you add pages in between or you move these buttons around, these commands are gonna stop working, which to me is not amazing. I don't love that that's the way that you have to program these commands. But because that is the case, you need to make sure that as you're working in companion, you indicate in some form or fashion that, hey, these are buttons that are called from other places. And so we don't want to move the positioning of them. You can maybe even put that in the title, the position that they're supposed to stay at. That could get kind of messy. The important thing is that you remember these cannot be moved. Otherwise it will break all of our integrations. So I don't love that things are that brittle. I wish that in ProPresenter you could actually have variables or the buttons themselves could be named so we could send a button name instead of a button location, but maybe that'll come at some point in Companion, who knows. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful for you guys, um, for anybody who needs to trigger multiple actions to happen, or even just one action from ProPresenter in Companion. We're building out more and more of this automation in my church as we start to do more and more complex things and have more events happening in our building with different people at those events. You know, sometimes people don't know all of the different pieces that need to be brought together in order to make stuff happen. So if we can automate things for those volunteers, it can make their jobs a lot easier and make sure that we have a consistent experience um, for anybody in the room, regardless of who happens to be in a tech booth. Or for those people who maybe you're a one man band, a one man show in that tech booth, this will make your life easier so you don't need to do 15 button presses in order to just play a video or start the bumper slides. Let me know down in the comments if you guys are already doing stuff like this or if you're interested in seeing more ProPresenter or companion content. Honestly, I haven't done a ton with ProPresenter, but I'm digging into it a lot more now and realizing just how powerful it is. So I would love to hear any suggestions for videos or even suggestions on how I can make my workflow better. I'm always looking to learn and I think it's best to learn from each other and see what we're all doing out here with these tools. So anyway, until next time. Thank you.